uh, drift current and the diffusion current are two mechanisms that are important. And the drift current happens when there is an electric field uh, within the depletion region. So this is a depletion region here, right? And when we, from equilibrium, if we change to the reverse bias, what's happening is, for instance, if we bias this with a voltage source, right? And this is a diode, right? What happens is this reverse bias, the pluses attract the minuses and this depletion region becomes wider because these minuses are going here. The ions, which are donors are staying here and the acceptors are staying here. And this depletion region is becoming wider. So in the reverse bias diode, what matters is the drift, okay? But in the forward bias, what matters is the diffusion. In the equilibrium, they are equal to each other, which means the drift current equals to the uh, diffusion current, and therefore we don't see any currents. So what is the diffusion current? Diffusion current is when the majority carriers here, for instance, P type, it has a lot of holes, like P stands for holes. So the holes try to diffuse from P type to the N type and N type there are a lot of electrons. So these electrons try to diffuse this region, right? So they try to diffuse to the P site. So this diffusion is though prevented by these donors and acceptors because these electrons, if they wanna move here, they will force other minuses. So minus push minus, right? So they kind of have a reaction. They will be prevented to get in, but some of them will try to. So, and that equilibrium is basically this equilibrium, like the, the current due to that diffusion and the current due to the drift when they equal to each other, this is an equilibrium and we don't see any currents. The drift current, as we mentioned, these electrons, you know, like basically they will be uh, like, this is, there's an electric field here, right? Like an inner electric field. There is no voltage source. And this electric field, there are plus and minuses and these pluses will push pluses towards this direction, right? But pluses want to go here, the holes. So that is the balance we're talking about. Same with electrons. So if we go to the next slide, to remember what is the reverse bias. I already explained that depletion regions becomes wider because electrons are moving this direction and holes are moving this direction, right? So that this depletion region becomes much wider. So again, in the reverse bias, the drift current is the major mechanism because this electric field was small the depletion region become wider and you know this electric field becomes wider or in other words you can't think this depletion region like a wall right like the wall us was trying to build towards mexico so mexicans don't get into us same thing like the junction builds this wall so that holes don't move this region electrons don't move this region right so the diffusion basically is prevented, right? So in reverse bias, again, this major mechanism is the drift current and the electric field. And if you look at the other one, the forward bias, in the forward bias, this depletion region becomes much, 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 much smaller because now we have this bias mechanism and, you know, like if we draw the diode like this again, now this plus voltage and here is minus voltage, minus pushes minus this way so that the acceptor ions here becomes much smaller. And similarly plus push plus is this way so that these donors becomes much smaller here. So depletion region is much smaller. The main transport is the diffusion because the depletion, the volt is 
like you can't jump over the wall, right? Because it's thinner. All these holes now can move here. All these electrons now can move here easily, much easily. So compared to an equilibrium here, you now have this one in the forward bias. So if you compare, you know, this one, you'll see that there is an extra minority holes here, you know, compared to the previous case, right? Before this was the case in equilibrium. Now you are looking at it in forward bias. You see much more minority holes in the N region due to this diffusion. And these uh, equ uh, equations are described by these ones. How much you bias, basically, you can increase your minority at the other region. If you increase this forward bias, that means you push this uh, electric field, like basically you make this plus and you make minus stronger so that this depletion region becomes smaller of course there's a limit it gets smaller but you are basically pushing the diffusion happen so that you know as you can see here if you increase the vf uh you will be increasing the uh this one much more so um let's see one second let me get these people in So um, again, as a reminder, when we look at the forward bias region, or actually when we look at the equilibrium region, we had some formulas and those formulas were telling us there is this built-in function and the built-in function are uh, functions of thermal voltage and also the majority carriers holes at the P region and also minority carriers holes at the end reach or it's vice versa. And when we you know, put some equations, we can write this built-in voltage in terms of doping, right? And this was your one of your homework questions. And um, knowing this, we'll get to use this in this uh, next slide. We will be able to write the diffusion, extra diffusion currents you know, in terms of basically we are trying to figure out due to this extra diffusion of the minority holes, how much current we are generating. And that current is basically written as this. Because normally here in this one, we have no currents. But in this one, we have extra current and that extra current is coming from extra diffusion. Right, because we know that normally drift equals diffusion. But here in forward region, these extras, extra holes and extra electrons, they provide current to the system. And we can write that current. These are due to the holes and these are due to the electrons. And when we sum them up, when we use this formula I showed in the previous slide, we get to write the diode equation, right? So the diode equation will be used in the next slides much more because BJT is actually two diodes and you'll see how. BJT is a sandwich. And if we look at the BJT in 3D, you'll see that it actually has a P region, which we call it base. And it has an N region, which we call it emitters. And it has another N region, which we call it collectors. And in 3D, you know, you can see the BJT like that. And if you look at it in 2D, it's a sandwich. What's the sandwich? There is a P in the middle, which is a region doped with acceptors. And there are two regions doped with, collect, uh, with donors. And we can basically think it as two diodes like this because this is the p region and one diode like that right because this is a pn 
and this is a PM, right? And the middle one, the middle P junction, we call it base. And from base to the emitters, we have a diode. And from base to the collectors, we have another diode. So whichever diode is conducting, it causes a current mechanism. And basically there are four combinations, right? This diode conducts, this doesn't conduct. This diode conducts, the one at the top, and this doesn't conduct. Both of them doesn't conduct and both of them conducts. And those four regions basically form the BJT four regions, which we call the regions of BJT. So if we draw the characteristics of this BJT, the Y axis is current, and let's call the X axis voltage VCE. We'll have a current mechanism like this. Sorry, it won't be like that. And as you can see here, at some point, you know, like when VCE is much more than a point, you will have a constant current, like let's say some somewhere here, right? And this region is forward region. This region here in the middle is called saturation, and this one is reverse saturation, and this one is cutoff. So this will this current is much so 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 small. Okay, it's like almost zero. So um, and when the VBE voltage increases basically you can have different offsets like what is offset your current can get much smaller right so so these are representing different vbe voltages and it makes sense why does it make sense because this one is a diode right and if we increase the voltage of this diode, which is this one, VB voltage, then we get to increase the current on this diode, right? And basically this junction is emitting much more current if the potential on that junction is much more, right? So if this VB is, let's say 0 0.7, it will conduct some current. But if it is 0 point, let's say eight, it will conduct much more current, right? Due to the diode equation that we already studied. Though, now let's assume this is reference zero, right? And let's assume here is 0 0.7. Well, let's just assume we see voltage is one volt. And that means this diode here will have a volt voltage on it 0 0.3 but minus right because here is 0 0.7 here is one volt so that means this voltage is less than this voltage which means that this diode is not conducting right so we can think that one volt is here and let's assume that this one volt now changed to 0 0.7 now this diode is still not conducting because the voltage on it is zero so this became 0 0.7 basically now we change that 0 0.7 to 0 0.5 basically the vc is 0 0.5 now we are somewhere here. And now you are wondering why my current drops, right? Your current drops, you know, compared to here, the VC of one volt. Now we have a VC of 0 0.5 volts and your current dropped because now this diode starts to conduct. Basically 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.2 volts, even though it's so, so small, very tiny, 
this diode now starts to conduct a current this way. So superposition tells us, hey, we have a current going this way and we have a current going this way. Well, the total current will get smaller, right? So that the BJT is all about this, the superposition of two diodes conducting currents on and off. So now let's say this VC is zero. Now we are here, right? Well, even though this VB voltage is 0 0.7, you know, basically we are like here, right? Even though this VB is 0 0.7, uh, basically this is the VB, I'm sorry. Now VC being zero means this diode is also strongly conducting. So both diodes, the, the one at the bottom, the one at the top, they are both conducting strongly, makes your current zero because you have two different polarities, right? Well, so um, I over jumped to explain certain things and this basically creates the behavior of BJT. Um, to look at how it works, so, or what it does actually first, BJT is a current controlled, I'm sorry, a voltage controlled current source. So why is it a voltage controlled current source? Because we know from diodes that the base emitter voltage, the voltage here, P to N, controls the current, right? So we already studied that in the in the diode section, like here. Where was the diode current? Um, this one, right? So it's telling you, hey, my diode current is a function of my diode junctions voltage. So this voltage matters a lot because it is affecting your diode current. Now we have two diodes and those two diodes, as I mentioned, conduct in different ways. And now we'll study how they conduct. But before we do that, let's just model one of the PN junction. A PN junction has a voltage VBE, but we let's call it V1. And it takes this V1 voltage, it multiplies with a constant and provides a current, right? Here V1 voltage is basically VB voltage. So a small input is amplified as a current with a factor of K. And then if we connect that current to a load, it's multiplied with that current. And then we can see the output. So a diode is basically a voltage dependent current source, right? And, but the diode also has an input resistance. So why it has the input resistance? Well, because like, if we draw the diode like this, and this is the voltage on the diode, and let's call it V1. Well, so there is a current getting in here, right? So this mechanism inside uh, always have a resistance against that current. Like basically a diode always wants to stay in equilibrium. So whenever a current flows, it will create a resistance inside. So basically this current flows through the diode right this it flows through the diodes and it creates this voltage and regardless of this input resistance well we have still the same voltage right because we bias that the input resistance doesn't necessarily change the current it's just you know it's just there right now because we have the current regardless because we it's a parallel right we, this is the diode we are parallel supplying this voltage to the diode. So regardless of the input resistance, the magnitude of the amplification remains unchanged because we still 
have the same formula. The current is saturation current times exponential VBE, or we call it the forward you know, voltage over VT, right? So this current is basically this current. Any questions so far? Okay, so, and here as you can see, the diode can be represented as with uh, three junctions. Uh, what are those three junctions? Well, not a diode, but it's a bipolar transistor. So there is a, so this is the current flowing here. So let's assume this is one junction because that was a PN, right? And we assume that this is the other junction. So the voltage occurs at one, right? And this voltage is with respect to two because we are looking at this, this diode first. And this V1 voltage causes this current, IS exponential V1, this one, all right? And this is the output connected to the rest of the circuit, let's call it T. So the current flows from collectors, and this is emitters, and this is base. Okay, so now we'll get into the mechanism, why we call it base, why we call it emitters, why we call it collectors. So because it's a PN junction, remember in a junction, PN junction, one side is doped heavily. Like let's say this is, P. for instance, let's say this is P, let's say this is N. And this side is donored, uh, uh, this side is doped with acceptors and N side is doped with donors, right? And there are a lot of electrons here. And there are a lot of holes here. So when we bias this PN junction, these electrons will start to be emitted basically the current, the main mechanism of currents or electrons will be emitted by the emitters and it will be collected by the collectors. So if we draw the currents, if we draw the transistors, this is the emitter, right? And these electrons will start to move in here, which cause a current in the other direction. And this is the junction here. So this is P, this is N, right? So these electrons, basically this is a, there is a lot of diffusion happening because electrons in the N region are starting to move towards the P, P region. And now also the holes from the P region tries to move to the N region, right? And if we look at it in a much better way, you know, we can see that these electrons are emitted by the, here is emitters. Okay, this is basically, we are talking about a transistor like that. And N region, the electrons start to diffuse towards the P region because this PN is positive. And from the P region, there are holes start to move in towards this region, right? Because this PN again is uh, like in the forward bias. But the amount of the electrons are much more compared to the holes because this N region is much more heavily doped compared to P region. So we are emitting much more electrons compared to 
holes moving from P to the N. And when these electrons start to move from N to the P, some of them combine with the holes. Basically, they like collide to each other, and there, there is a mechanism holes electrons colliding to each other. So there is a slight little current getting lost there. But the main mechanism here is the electrons moving from N to the P through diffusion, right? And now we have another junction here. And I already explained to you that this is, you know, another diode, right? Because we told you that guys already there are two diodes. P is sandwich in the middle and ends are at the edges. So this diode here is 0 0.8, this point, and here is one volt. So this diode is in reverse, uh, reverse bias. It has a bias of minus 0 0.2. And the diode is not conducting. The depletion region is big. And knowing that, you know, the depletion region is big. This is not creating any current due to the holes, you know, basically moving in from the P, right? Because this junction is not working due to the reverse bias on it. And now these electrons start to move from here and to the P. Well, so what happens to these electrons, right? So if you look at the next slide, these electrons show a curve called electron density. So when they move in, the electrons at this point is the highest. And slowly, because some of them combine with the holes and some of them diffuse, you know, the electrons start to get much less at X2 compared to X1. And this one is formulated. And when it is formulated, just like in the diodes, we are able to you know, define characteristics uh, of the uh, forward and reversed uh, regions. So the, the transport mechanisms basically as we already know, in an active, in a uh, forward bias diode, is diffusion. So it's the same here. You know, when the electrons move, uh, the, oops, sorry. It's same here, when the electrons move, the, you know, they are diffusing from N to P and holes are diffusing from P to N. But the, due to the doping, we have this ratio called beta. And that beta says, hey, the amount of electrons moving from emitters towards the coll collectors is beta times more than my holes getting into the base. So, you know, this was a diode equation, right? Collectors current is saturating current, saturation current times exponential voltage on the diode divided by thermal voltage minus one. So same here, this, there is this current mechanism due to that VBE, right? There is a junction that there's a diode here. So, but if you look at IB, the beta, the forward common, common emitter current gain, you know, we can see that that gain basically shows that the current getting into the base is much smaller. Basically, again, this is the P region. This is the N region. So the amount of electrons moving in is beta times more than the holes moving from P to N. That's why we have this beta, you know, IF over beta here. 
Any questions? Okay. Um, well, so as I mentioned, this current goes through the emitters and collector collects that current at some point. But the current, you know, we know that it has a mechanism like that. So, you know, the amount of electrons are much more here. The amount of electrons is much less here, but still creates a current, right? So that current is written by this. And IB is written like that. The total current will be actually IC plus IB. It's a little tough to understand this uh, because uh, we are basically uh, trying to, sh you know, explain. Well, you told me that the current going from emitter to the collector, but then why did we write the collector current, right? Well, this current is actually determined by this base emitter voltage. So right here. And this current plus this current is actually not this current. The their sum is not this current. Like this diode acts in a manner that the current basically, we are looking at the ways the ways like from the opposite side. So normally the current coming through this collector plus this base current, their sum is the emitter current. Uh, because actually this base current is not created from, you know, from nothing. It's created with the trigger of emitter currents. So that's why when we look at this current, you know, we are not assuming that this current was there. This current is generated to, you know, to create like diffusion currents as a reaction to the other diffusion currents. So uh, therefore, when we look at the emitter current, we can say that you know emitter current is sum of collector current plus base current, and uh, basically they are the same here in parentheses, right? But the base current is I S divided by beta F collector current is IS at the front. So we can write this as IS in parentheses, one plus one over beta F, right? And this one plus one divided beta, beta F is also written as one over Gamma, this is gamma, right? Oh no, this is alpha. So this uh, one over alpha. So, and this alpha is called the forward common base current gain. Uh, why is it forward common base current gain? Because we are looking at the uh, IE versus IB. So, uh, And looking at the alpha, you'll see that it's between 0 0.95 and one. And well, that makes sense, right? Because this beta is huge. If this beta is huge uh, between 20 to 500, and this one will be such a small term. And uh, then that makes that this alpha will be slightly between 0 0.95 and one, because this term will be slightly bigger than one, right? So, um, and we can write alpha in terms of beta. So if for instance, beta is 100, this alpha will be 100 over 101. So basically if the, emitter current is 101 units, 100 of it is coming from collectors and one unit is coming from base. That's how we can interpret this, okay? 
So the 100 unit is coming from collectors, one unit is coming from base because beta was 100, right? The overall unit will be 101, which is here. So, which means that collector current IC over IE can be also written as gamma, uh, alpha, sorry. Right. Because the emitter current is so close to the collector current, but it is slightly more due to this very small, tiny beta current. So beta IB is IC over beta, right? And IC over IE is no, basically this one, right? Any questions? Well, now we are looking only one junction, assuming that this junction is short circuits. So this is in equilibrium, right? There is a junction here. So we are not even looking at it yet. We are just looking how this junction might act when there is a voltage on it. Well, now let's look at the other junction. Let's connect the voltage source there. And it will probably act the same way, right? Because now we were looking at that junction. Now we are looking at this junction. So and how it acts will be there will be a diode here. And the voltage here is base and here is collectors and uh, basically we will have similar equations uh, there will be uh, one second there will be a current due to the bc vbc because vbc is the voltage on the diode so and this diode will create this current and similarly uh, the base current will be that emitter current divided by beta and here this time uh, you know we can write the ic as ib minus ie uh, because well there was i think this is um, okay, something is wrong here. Okay, uh, this is plus. So, um, and here the only difference is before IE was IB plus IC, right? But now IC is IB plus IE. And the reason is the orientation of the junctions. Now, we are looking at this junction, which means IC will be much more because IC is at the output and base is here and emitter is here. And basically there will be some emitter current here, there will be some base current here, but the overall current is the collectors coming out of the collectors. In the other one, there was some base currents there was some collector current and the emitter current was getting out due to this junction. Um, so when we do the superposition, when we look at the equations, you know, for instance, we write the equations due to the forward characteristics, which means when there's only this voltage and then we look at the reverse characteristics so this was forward for instance let's look at ic right and then we look at the reverse characteristics and we write the ic for you know in terms of the this voltage where is ic like this one and when we sum them up it's a superposition 
and we will we are able to write the entire equation for instance this one and same for emitter current same for base current okay and these equations are valid for any bias so as i mentioned these junctions can be in four different regions you know because there are two different uh, diodes right they can be on and on they can be off and off they can be on and off and they can be off and on but regardless the voltages on these bias this is vb voltage because this is b here this is collectors and this is emitters so whatever the voltage on it on b uh, base collector or emitters we put it here and we can get the currents because we just use superposition right okay um so any questions okay for instance if you look at this question the vbb voltage is 0 0.75 so we know the voltage is 0 0.75 let's assume here is reference okay and here is five volts so basically here is five volts five here 0 0.75 here and zero volt here can you tell me the can you tell me the diodes which ones are off which one are on which one is on there are two diodes right is this diode on no it's not is this diode on yes yes right so we can basically even ignore this we don't even have to care about it because it doesn't even you know exist in the circuit you know it doesn't really represent anything to us anymore so but we can still write it you know the the, the voltage on it is minus 4.25 then we can still put it in the equation but this is giving you almost zero right so writing it just you know gives you probably you know 0 0.001 ter term in the equation so the main junction working is here is this one but if this one wasn't five let's say this was was 0 0.5 right now this is 0 0.75 here this diode is still kind of off, but slightly there will be some small current on it. So instead of minus 4.25, now the current, the voltage on it will be 0 0.25, right? Because 0 0.75 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. So, and that 0 0.25 will, uh, cause some you know issues compared to this it is still small right but still it will have an effect so and it will have an effect because as i jumped to this characteristics of the transistors you know i wrote the characteristics super fast so that you can understand it the x-axis y was vce and the y-axis was the transistor current and with different vbe voltages which is different vb voltages the characteristics was this right so and this characteristics tells you hey when i increase my vbe voltage i can increase the current even for the same VCE, right? 
But when I start to decrease the VC voltage, basically collector emitter voltage, when I start to decrease it, regardless my regardless of my VBE voltage, my current will start to drop. Why will it start to drop? Because the other diode is starting to turn on, right? So when, for instance, you know, here, let's say we are at 0 0.8. Now we came to 0 0.5. Now we are somewhere here, right? You see the currents are dropping on the specific curves. And if we drop a little bit more to 0 0.1, now we'll be here on these curves. And if we drop a little bit more to zero, now we won't have any current, even though this bias is forward bias, right? Because this, uh, this, this, this junction is forward bias because this junction is also forward bias, okay? Um, that is all about BJTs actually. So um, it's a uh, voltage controlled current source and uh, the voltages on these two junctions define your current. And we usually use BJT like as this voltage being positive and this voltage being negative. So like 99% of the time, this diode doesn't work and this diode works. So heavily, we depend on base. Well, this is a PMP structure, I'm sorry. So uh, I jumped one slide. Okay, heavily we depend on that B, uh, base emitter voltage. Okay, we don't use this BC voltage. We usually make this diode off. So now there is this other diode called PMP. So what is PMP? PMP is we have P at the both sides and N sandwich in the middle, right? This is the N region. So we doped here and here with acceptors and we dope here with donors. And now, the, as you can see, the diodes are this one here and one here. But previously our diodes were the opposite way, right? It was one here, and one here. But now it is opposite and now the polarities change. For instance, to have some current, what we care is the EB voltage, right? Because this side is now positive, this side is now negative. So now we are looking at EB rather than BE, for instance. So for instance, again, this side is P, this side is N. For now we are looking at C, B voltage, V, C, B voltage. And the orientation also changes. Normally in a NPN, we hit the base here. We hit the call emitter here and we hit the collector here. And the current was going from collector to the emitter. Now, what happens in PMP is, you know, because P is at the both sides and this is N, right? Now the current shows from P to the N. So, and therefore uh, you can see that, this is also MP. Now you can see that what we care for this transistor to conduct is, you know, this voltage, EB voltage, because we want this, trans, this diode to conduct. If the other diode conducts, now it will be creating a reverse current, right? It will be creating a current this way through the collectors. And now then the currents will neutralize. Okay. 
So in the NPN, we are looking at the base emitter voltage. This is base. And this we are looking at this BC base B uh, base collectors to be zero or minus. Like we don't want any almost any voltage on this. You know, for instance, even this voltage is zero point two. That is bad, right? Because let's assume here is zero. That one is 0 0.2. To have some current through this junction, this should be 0 0.7. Then that means the voltage on this diode is 0 0.5. And it's not good because 0 0.5 will make this diode turn on. Well, it's similar to in, in the PNP. The other diodes, if it starts to conduct, you know, if, you know, for instance, here is uh, 0 0.7, let's assume here is zero. And if this voltage becomes 0 0.5, well, now this diode will start to conduct and a VC of 0 0.2 here in this case VEC will be enough you know to turn on both voltages so basically here we are at VC 0 0.2 for a NPN or for a PNP we write VAC And that 0 0.2 will be the, you know, voltage that the current starts to drop. Okay. Well, it changes with different transistors, of course, because it is diode dependent, right? But uh, it shows that both diodes are turning on in this region. But this is called saturation region. But in the forward region, which means we have currents, and that's where we want to use our transistors for amplification. And this region, we only have one diode, one diode that we want to be on. Okay. Any questions? So um, this PNP might confuse you. When I was a student, I got confused a lot. Uh, if we have NPN, why are we using PNP, right? Well, so doping-wise, sometimes it's easier to create the structures. So if you look at how complicated the structure is, for instance, you know, I show you the 3D, you know, basically here we doped the base region with P, and we doped the emitters and collector with N. And we doped one of the regions, like for instance, emitter region, like NPN, this emitter dopes, doped heavily, right? So this current is much bigger than the other current. And here it's harder to dope base region P, and then we need to create this separate region you know as an end dopt extra dop region because if we look at the characteristics in 3d we already dopt the entire region with n right but we have to mask a certain part so that that region doesn't get dopped it's like basically like covering it with a cloth assume it right so that the paint doesn't go there like in a 3D way, it's the same way. We close that side so it doesn't get doped. Then we dope the other region with P, right? But then while we are doing that, we also cover the emitter region so it doesn't get doped with P. Then, you know, we have to dope the other region 
with N plus, like extra doping with donors. Okay, so it's not an easy process, neither for NPN or PNP, but for PNP, you know, depending on the doping mechanism, it might get much easier. Um, so, um, Hocam, as I mentioned, may I ask seven. a question? Yeah. Uh, since we said in NPN, my question is regarding NPN, uh, we show two. Uh, equations for each uh, port or uh, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, in uh, for example, in, in this one, can we? Uh, this is NPN, right? And yeah. I'm not denotating. Sorry. Can we uh, in exclude uh, the exclude the uh, reverse one? For the the junction which we talked about B B C. Yeah, if the BC is minus, if the BC is minus, you can do that, right? Because this one will go to zero. Yeah, and the, that exponential will be so small. It's yeah. minus. Yeah, this will be small. So that the main term will be here. Uh -huh. And this is this is zero. This will be minus one. And it will be uh -huh. minus minus plus. But this term is also very, very small. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you won't really have a problem because the beta R and beta F is like hundred or two hundred. So mm -hmm. uh, this is the forward beta and this is the reverse beta, mm -hmm. and okay. they are different. Yeah, and they, they are different because the junctions are different, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. one side was heavily doped with N plus. But if we mm -hmm. look at the other junction, it was only n, yes, so yes. that that creates a def difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, özetle hocam Türkçe emin olmak için soruyorum. Leakage kırıntı vesaireye hesaba katmazsak çok ufak olduğu için şu equationı direkt kullanabiliriz, değil mi? Yani forward bias'teki equationı eğer forward bias'taysa. Aynen şu region'da kullanabilirsiniz. Demin, önceki çizdeki. Demin ha. çizmiştim. Hı -hı, hı -hı, şu, şu region'da kullanabilirsiniz. Hı -hı, hı -hı. Ama bu region'da kullanamazsınız. Aynen. Hı -hı. Teşekkür ederim. Rica ederim. Ama şunları şu şekilde bütün region'larda kullanabilirsiniz. Yani for valid for any bias. Çünkü hı -hı. hem BC'ye hem de BE'ye include ediyor. Aynen. Buna da buna da zaten transport model deniyor. Tamam. Teşekkür ederim. Oh, rica ederim. Um, well, when I first studied this BJTs, it wasn't easy to understand. So definitely you should read the instructor notes I uh, put it, I uploaded. I also uploaded notes from three different books. Uh, when I first listened my instructors you know, that didn't click first time. So without extra studying, it is almost impossible to understand this very well. So, and you know, don't basically think, why am I not understanding this? Because it's not super easy. Well, you probably understand 30, 40% of it, maybe some of you 70% of it, but there will be still some points that, for instance, the, the physics, right? I explained how the electrons move here, holes move here, just like a diode and so on. You know, but like the physics behind it is a little bit more complicated. So you have to definitely go check your notes and understand a little bit further, okay? Um, let's take a break. And uh, before we take a break, let me go through this slide quickly, uh, which explains very well. Um, so as you can see, we explained these two diodes and one of, they are different diodes due to the doping. So we assume BR and BF. And the current, so the IS for these diodes, we assume they are same, the saturation currents. And when we look at these two diodes, uh, assuming that both of them are on, you know, there will be currents, forward currents, due to the this diode, which we call IF, right? And then there will be reverse currents, which will be to this diode, and we call it IR. 
So the total current will be IF minus IR, right? And simply we can write IF and IR as this as well. If we get rid of the ones, you know, like minus one and stuff. So, and um, this current uh, source model, we, this is also transport model. It's a much simpler than the previous uh, one here. So what we did here, we got rid of the ones, as you can see, because it's forward, right? In forwards region, you know, because exponential is much bigger. I said, mentioned a few times, these ones don't really matter, right? And when you do that, you can simply write, hey, you know, due to the forward junction, we have this current, due to the reverse junction, we have this current, not reverse junction, but the other diodes, we have this current and they cancel, they kind of uh, superimpose like a superposition and we have the total current, okay? And when we look at the base, well, base current, you know, don't forget, it's always one over beta of the collector's current. So here, uh, IB is IS over beta for the first junction, for this junction. And for the other one, it is minus IS over beta R, okay? Um, the stuff that you, when you are reading, try to understand, you know, IC, IE, and IB, how they are related to each other. Okay, so in the NPN, the base current and the collector current, their sum is IE. But in a PNP, it is slightly different. IC is IB plus IE and so on. Okay, uh, all right, let's this summarize those four regions of the diodes. So for instance, when the base emitter junction is forward bias, as I mentioned, and the other one is reverse bias. This is the forward active region. That's where we use it for good amplification. And it's this region, right? But when they are both forward forward, then this called saturation region. And it's this region where the current is starting to you know, drop and that saturation region, we can use it as a switch uh, because basically we can use this transistor like on and off, but it's not a good switch because we have CMOS. CMOS, which you'll see in the next lectures is a much better switch than the BJT because BJT has a, a transport mechanism, which means they are not acting impulsive you know, use like when we turn this voltage from one to zero, there will be a lot of delay, like transport mechanism to prevent instant turn off. So that's why BJT is not a great switch. And we rarely use this region. And we rarely use this region either, which is cutoff region, reverse cutoff region. And we rarely use reverse active region, which is this region when both diodes are off, right? Because it, it, there is no application for it, you know, like for both diodes to be reversed by us. Support model for the BJT, uh, due to the different operations of two different diodes, we had four different regions and with transport model, we were able to find any currents by placing the voltages. Um, but as I mentioned, sometimes you can just make assumptions. For instance, if one of the other diode wasn't working, like wasn't working means if it is on the reverse bias, basically it's not working, it's off, right? So, and we call that region forward bias region because we want actually only this diode to be on, right? And we can simplify that model, you know, and we can draw the equivalent model for the circuits. 
And if we draw the equivalent model, this node is the base node. So we start from the base node and we connect the diode to the emitter node, right? So this is the base emitter diode here. And because the emitter current is sum of two different currents, collector current and the base current. So this is the base current through the junction. And we have also the collector current, right? And that collector current, we called it BFIB. So it is beta times base current. And that those two currents sum and they create the emitter currents. And as we mentioned, this was already modeled as a voltage controlled current source, right? So we can either write current as this, or we can write current as voltage controlled current source because this IC current, the current through this mechanism will be dependent on the VBE voltage, right? If the VBE voltage is bigger than 0 0.7, then as you recall from the PNP and PN, this is the N, this is P, this is N, right? The electrons will, much more electrons will be able to get into the region and create that uh, diffusion. Uh, and these electrons will get into the P region, but they are minority carriers in the P, right? Normally electrons, there are not many electrons in the P because P is a region with a lot of holes. So therefore, we saw that in that region, what happens is electrons start to basically collide with holes here in this region. And we saw that there is a gradient. And that gradient, if you recall, you know, like it was dropping from a certain point, you know, when electrons get into the P region, they were dropping up to a level, right? And because there are a lot of holes here, you know, plus minus, they neutralize each other, right? And depending on the doping of the P region, we have this gradient. And this gradient is the most important factor determining the speed of the BJT. Because as you recall, this is the gradient of the charge, right? There are this much electrons here, and there are, this is assuming this is zero, we're looking at the y-axis, right? And assuming this is zero here, the slope of this will be how fast electrons combining with holes. Basically, we are losing electrons. We cannot let these electrons live in the P region because they are minorities. Basically, majorities will kill minorities in the P region. They won't let them live, but they will try to live for a while and create currents. So instead of the green one, for instance, in, if this happens, this is a much higher slope, right? And that means it will create a much more current uh, in this region if the, this happens. But the what is really dependent is the width of this base region. You know, basically uh, the base region tells you electrons move, get in, and they start to decay, okay? And if this base region is small instead of big, like let's assume it is much small, small means in width, okay? Then when electrons get in, and it will be zero here, it creates a bigger slope, right? Because width is smaller. The level of electrons is same. The zero point is same. So instead of you know, getting in, let's say this is one micro, let's say this is 0 0.5 micro. So this will have a much bigger slope. And this defines the speed of your BJT. The, it makes sense, right? Because the smaller the BJT width, the smaller the base, you can create a faster device because you are creating a much steeper gradient. 
Um, anyway, so uh, regardless of the simplified circuit model, simplified circuit model tells you, hey, now my collector currents and my base currents creates this current actually at the emitter. You know, the way that I'm explaining is starting from the emitter because that's how the literature is. But actually this emitter currents, the electrons getting into from the emitters are simply the sum of the base currents and the collector currents. Therefore, we can write it as IB plus IB times beta, right? And um, we know that in the uh, forward active region, which is this diode is on and this diode is off, the VBE will be simply zero, around 0 0.7 because when the diode conducts, regardless of the current on the diode, the voltage will be changing very little, right? If you remember the diode characteristics, you know, it's something like this, right? So this voltage will be around 0 0.7 regardless of the current. So this simplified model shows you, hey, this list model, this VBA is 0 0.7. Let's keep this current controlled current source, you know, BFIB, and then IE will be some of these two currents. This is the most simplified circuit model for the forward active region, okay? Um, probably you can create three, four different regions for this. I'm sorry, three, four different models for this, uh, but this one is the most simplified one. And when you see this BJT in a circuit, you just draw the equivalent model. For instance, here, the equivalent model is this, right? And putting this model here, you can just simply solve the circuits. You know, there is a 0 0.7 volt here. It's like E here, you know, emitter here, and then collector here, there's a voltage source. Simply, you can make some Kirchhoff voltage low, Kirchhoff current low, and you can find the currents associated with it. Quite model forward active region, right? We had this diode on, and we had this diode off. So this diode off means there is no reason to include this. So we only include this diode and we write the equivalent representation. And for the, if it is the other region, which is called the reverse active region, in that region, the basically what's saying happening is base collector diode is forward bias, base emitter diode is reverse bias, right? So I don't know why it made it this way but uh, just flipped vertically. Uh, but basically this base emitter diode is off and base collector diode is on, okay? So what we care is about is this base collector diode. And drawing it, we have the base here. We have the collector diode here, right? And we have the collectors here. And then the emitter is here. So you can model this emitter collectors, like emitter collectors, because there's a current going through here. And this current is a function of the base currents. You can write it in terms of that base currents or uh, that voltage. And then you can sum them up. And uh, we, I mean, we, we don't really use this region, this reverse active region. It's good to know the difference from the forward active region, uh, but we don't really get to use a transistor in this region a lot, but it's good to know how it operates. Uh, so let me explain a phenomena and the phenomena is, well, you already know the breakdown voltages, same happens in the transistors because we have diodes, uh, we have two different diodes. When you apply a huge reverse voltage at the 
anode compared to cathode, you know, what happens is this, right? So that mechanism is still valid for transistors, but due to doping differences, the breakdown voltage happens differently between for these diodes. So because the base emitter diode has a relatively low breakdown voltage, because the doping here is much higher, their breakdown voltage will be much faster because there are more electrons. So a small breakdown, small breakdown reverse voltage will create a faster, you know, a quicker mechanism for a breakdown. But collector base diode can be designed to break down at much larger voltages because their doping is smaller compared to the emitters. Um, and um, then there is a phenomena due to the minority carrier transport in the base region. So what is the minority carrier transport? Um, when I mentioned electrons, so assume this is a transistor, right? Yeah, we draw it in the flipped way. So this is base, this is emitters, this is collectors, okay? And there is one diode here. And then there is another diode here. And the depletion region of these diodes are basically shown here, right? This is one depletion region and the other is the other depletion region. So we mentioned already a lot of times hey, the electrons moved in because, you know, here is plus, here is minus, and the diode is in forward bias so that, you know, these electrons will be moving this way. I'm sorry, the electrons will be moving this way. Uh, and because this minus pushes minus, right? Here is minus, here is plus. So minuses pushes minuses. So now electrons moving in. Uh, it's great. This is our home for electrons because this is the N region. The majorities are already electrons. So electrons are diffusing in. And when electrons are diffusing in, now it went to P region. P region is the region where electrons are minorities. There are a lot of holes here. So they are not welcomed, right? Because they are not welcomed, well, they start to combine, fight with these holes, right? There are a lot of holes here. So whenever they got in, these electrons start to combine, they fight. So we see this gradient at the bottom, right? Electrons got in to the base, to the P region, which we call it base. They got in from the got in from the time they got in, they start to decay. Okay. And you know, at the time they got in, it was n zero. This width is zero points. And the time they got out of it, it's called NVB. So at width B, like assuming the base of the width, width B, at that point. The level of the electrons are here, and at n zero, the time, this the place that they got in, it's the, this is the point, and we can write them as like assuming that n b zero is the equilibrium electron density in the p type base region, regardless of how many electrons, like the doping, the minority doping in the p region is n b zero equilibrium. So due to this base emitter voltage, this is boosted, right? Because now this base emitter voltage created a lot of electrons move in. It's pushed all these electrons in this direction. And because it pushed in this direction, these NB zeros, these minorities are boosted up. It was at this point, now it's this point, right? And at this region at NVB, 
well, now we don't really see the effect of BE anymore because we are here. Now we are seeing the effect of BC. And that is defining your electron here, and VB. Well, now, you know, due to these equations, we have this gradient. But what is interesting, when we change one of these voltages, for instance, we change, we change VC voltage, which means we change the we change this voltage, right? VBC, when we change the VC. So, and when we increase the VC voltage, for instance, what is happening is this diode is getting into more reverse bias, right? Because if you increase this voltage more, this diode is getting into reverse junction more it's it's more in reverse bias because you know this point is cut out right this point is anode so this voltage increasing this voltage more increases the depletion region because we already saw that a diode in reverse bias increases its depletion region the more reverse bias you apply the more depletion region gets and the width of that depletion region gets higher. So previously, the depletion region was this. Now, that PN junction depletion region got much wider. And that means your base got smaller. Your base was here, okay? But now your base got to this level due to this depletion region becoming wider. And now this is your new base here, right? Compared to here. And the drop in the base is changing your gradients because the base was the region where my electrons are colliding, right? We had electrons max here, and they become almost zero at the edge of the base, right? Basically, P region is called base, okay? This is base. So when electrons get into the base, it was here max, but it becomes almost zero here at the edge of the base. Now the base got smaller, but its purpose is to make electrons again zero at the edge. But because the width is smaller, now what happens is, you know, we have a sharper gradient, okay? Compared to as, you know, a slope that is much less. You know, if it becomes like this, it is even the slope is higher, right? Because we are, this is the, we are thinking in terms of this being y-axis. So um, this causes a phenomenon called early effect. And early effect says the current, collector current, depends on VC voltage. Because we changed the VC, we made it bigger. Because we made it bigger, that increased this depletion region of the other diodes, which caused the base the, this middle sandwich region gets smaller and that changed the gradient of the electrons drop. And because the slope of this gradient is the current, right? This, this curve is the charge and the curves, the charge derivative is the current. Because the slope got much bigger, basically the current got much bigger. So, and the summary is when we increase VC voltage, you know, that causes the current increase much more. And that's called early effect or early voltage. And you'll see a curve like this. If you look at in terms of current times, uh, current versus VCE, you know, when VC increases, the 
it won't be like that, but you will see a slight increase. Okay, the curve will be this. Okay. Or if you look at versus VBE, right? For the same VBE voltage, your current won't be here anymore, but it will be here for a higher VBE, a higher VCE. Okay. So if you change, if you increase this voltage at the top, you'll see a shift from here to here. So that's how your supply voltage slightly changes your currents, uh, DJT currents. And the model will be now this time, instead of the simple model, now the model instead of this, now we'll have this slight term added to the current source. Okay, um, so when you put in P spice, a transistor actually it's quite complicated. Uh, it has a lot of capacitances, current sources, and uh, resistances, parasitic resistances, and it will all make sense in the next uh, semester class what they mean. But these are all different parasitics, um, so they define. Uh, the model, the BJT SPICE model. Uh, and in the next le lecture, we'll learn how we can use these transistors as amplifiers. And uh, because we already learned that these transistors are used as amplifiers, right? We are providing a voltage source. And when you provide this voltage source, uh, due to this bias, uh, due to this diode in the forward region, we get a lot of current here. And we already explained the physics behind it. Actually, when we forward bias the diode, electrons move in, and these electrons, while they are moving in, also holes also move the opposite direction. Some of them collide each other, and that causes more pump from the base. And uh, as a result, you know, this voltage source provides a current. This is in DC. What if we apply a small signal here, like a small AC voltage, like a voice signal, or like a cellular signal? This also gets amplified at the output, okay? So a small voltage gets much, bigger at the output. And it's due to this mechanism because whenever we apply a voltage, a VBE voltage, that causes a current, right, a IC. So if we apply a small, tiny voltage, well, that will also cause a tiny current amplified. And then that tiny current will get into a lot and will be multiplied with that load and will be a voltage, right? And we call this transconductance, which we will explain in the next le le uh, lecture. Uh, it's a very fun term to learn because all amplifiers have this term, transconductance. It is 